In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the love and mercy of God be with you. Let us pray. Loving Jesus, you taught your disciples never to judge, since they too would be judged. We kind of ask you that in the place of judgment may put mercy. For you yourself declared to St. Faustina that before coming back, as a just judge, you come as a merciful Savior. May you save us, Lord. May you lead us the way that leads us to your eternal Father, through you, Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly Take the speck out of your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear good listener, a good Monday of the new week to you. From the Gospel we have heard, I have chosen the theme, Do not judge, you are equally a sinner. My dear good listener, you and I are in the same boat. We are all sinners in need of God's mercy. Therefore Jesus in today's Gospel is cautioning us not to judge, since we ourselves shall be judged. And the judgment will be according to what we have performed, to the measure we have given to others. So Jesus is telling us, how can you say to me, remove the speck that is in my brother's eye, yet I fail to remove the log in mine? The usual actually say, when you point a finger at your neighbor, if you see very well, the other three fingers actually are looking at you. The eye reminder to you that before you say I'm wrong, you may be wrong three times more. Therefore, it's a challenge to you and I not to be quick at judgment, but to be quick at showing mercy. Jesus himself says, before I return as a just judge, I'll come as a merciful savior. So if God himself shows us mercy, why don't we show mercy to others? Here judgment does not mean that if someone is doing wrong, we keep quiet about it. No, because that's not an act of mercy. That somebody is in wrong and I go to correct them does not mean I've judged them. Here judgment has to do with punishment. Judgment here is excluding the other from my heart, from my friends, and just look at them as sinners. Jesus is telling us, no, you do not be like this. Because he tells us in Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 17, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every act may be established in the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. So in other words, Jesus is telling you, if your brother is in wrong, you cannot keep quiet. You go and help him out. So keeping quiet is neither a good thing, but judging others is a terrible thing. So what we are asked to do therefore is to be merciful. Be merciful. If God is merciful, then you have two. Because Jesus says in Luke chapter 6 verse 36, be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. So it is a challenge to us therefore to remember that we are all sinners. We are in the same boat. 
So we should not judge our brothers and sisters. We should not exclude them and look at them as sinners as if we ourselves were saints. We are all sinners. When I was reading the diary of St. Faustina, I found a similar thing. In her diary number 958, St. Faustina says, Some days ago a certain person came to me and asked me to pray for her intention as she had some urgent and important business. All of a sudden, I felt in my soul that this matter was not pleasing to God and I replied that I would not pray for this intention, but I will pray for you in general, I added. A few days later, this lady came back to me and thanked me for not having prayed for her intention, but rather for her, because she had been motivated by a spirit of revenge towards a certain person to whom she owed respect and veneration in virtue of the fourth commandment. The Lord Jesus had changed her interior dispositions and she herself acknowledged her guilt. So, the same thing comes back. St. Faustina showed her neighbor not to judge, but to pray. And that's why St. Faustina prayed for that lady that this heart of revenge, of judgment, would be healed. And indeed, God did it. You and I are called to pray for those who hurt us and to love those who hate us. This is a commandment from Jesus. May we practice it. The Lord be with you. May the God of love and mercy bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly remember to share the good news with your friends, but also to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not yet done so. I wish you the best of the day and the week. The body and the blood Soul and divinity